leading the Freeways Without Futures tour. And so we're heading over to go look at 345, which is the highway segment we're trying to remove out of downtown Dallas. And instead of actually going all the way to the freeway, because it's unsafe, it's nasty, there's not even sidewalks in some of these areas, we're actually going to go to a skyscraper up above the city and look down on the highway and see the whole highway network. I guess the story of, of 345 and the new Dallas and all this started about 12 years ago or so when I moved here to Dallas. I'd never even been to Texas. And I lived on one side of the freeway in the Deep Ellum neighborhood and would walk under that highway every single day. Huge thing, as you can see. And every single day, I would just imagine, like, what else could this be? You know, it could be anything. You're seeing highway tearouts happening around the country and around the world. And maybe we could do that someday. Fast forward to 2008, 2009, the city of Dallas is going through a downtown master plan. In that master plan, it explicitly said the highway loop, the inner loop, is a problem, but there's nothing we can do about it. So we decided, well, let's test that. And this highway was built in about 1973. When we started looking into this highway and researching it further, we realized that the thing had been structurally failing for about 10 years at that point in time. TxDOT had been fixing the columns. If we were actually down under it, you can see how a lot of the column structure is asymmetric. They're not like parallel, holding up two sides of it because of the way it winds through the city grid. So the thing is, is in bad shape. And uh, we decided before TxDOT even come and show up and start saying, hey, we need to move these cars and keep this thing standing and, you know, keep it as it's going for the next 20 years. And they've since come by and said it's going to cost $250 million to do that for 20 years. We said, you know, let's explore with different priorities in mind. What if we focused on economic development, uh, quality of life, and just, you know, restoring the urban fabric? So. Right, given the choice, I don't think very many neighborhoods would choose to have a freeway cut through them. Like, do you, any of you live in a town where folks would like the freeway to come through their neighborhood? Right, that, it's a preposterous notion. It's just a failed experiment, right? We tried it, hadn't been done anything like this before. Magnificent effort, awesome, fail. So let's maybe do something else. For 100 or 150 million, we could remove this thing, and all of a sudden we've got land to play with, and we can do all sorts of stuff. And that, in a sense, would reposition the market, so demand would be high, and everything else would work outside of that. And so we decided, let's just do a study. You know, let's hypothetically tear the thing out, restitch all the grids, and just see what that gives us. You know, how much land could we could we play with? You know, how many housing units would that create? How many jobs? What would the park acreage be that we could create instead of all that? And you look alongside of it. Because the highway is not even the, the major issue. It's like, look at everything around it. It's surface parking lots, it's boarded up buildings, there's storage facility, I mean like storage facility in the middle of downtown Dallas. So every time we're working on one of these projects, we have this litmus test in mind. And the litmus test is, does the change reward the short trip or the transit trip? And if the answer is yes, it's probably a good idea. So we're moving the highway rewards short trips and transit trips. The construction or widening of a highway rewards the long trip and the car trip. So it's kind of anti-city. By spreading cities out, lowering their densities, it reduces exchange. And by almost the very definition of the purpose of cities, it's, it's anti-city. There's not a single case where a freeway came out of a city and it didn't get better. But there's also not a single neighborhood that got better when the freeway went in. So it's actually fairly simple to understand. We started playing around with it and found that about four billion in, in private investment could be could happen all along it. Our study boundary includes all that vacant land and service parking lots. So for a cost of what we're looking at, 200 million or so, maybe that escalates with other improvements that we want to do. How far do we want to take it south? You know, we're leveraging four billion in private investment. The property tax is generated per year in that area is only about three million. We would change that to about 110 million a year, right? The kind of money that actually could be put towards extending the streetcars, you know, all sorts of other improvements the city wants to do. Also, it allows us to, the, the new tax base we could leverage against and build the second downtown dart line. You know, we walked along the dart line, all four lines, orange, red, blue, and green, all come together on that one line. And so we can't fit any more trains on the tracks, we can't fit any more lines in the system until we have a second dart line through downtown.